Hi, my name is Cassandra McIntyre, and I'm the nurse director of the Henry and Belinda Tamir Center, which is um, the place at Mass General where we run clinical trials for cancer treatments. Hi, my name is Becca Heist, and I'm a medical oncologist at the Mass General Cancer Center. I focus on lung cancers and I'm also a physician in the Tremere Center. So Becca, could you tell everybody why clinical trials are important and, um, and what they are? Yeah, sure. So clinical trials are really a way to find out new information. And in cancer, when we think about clinical trials, um, specifically treatment clinical trials, we're really looking at new ways to treat the disease. So these are studies that look at new drugs or new treatments to try to advance our ability to take care of patients with cancer. And there are a whole variety of different types of clinical trials. They can run anywhere from a first in human trial where a drug is being used in people in the first time um, to uh, more uh, uh, advanced studies like phase two or phase three studies where drugs are really being looked at to see how effective they are and how they might compare against standard treatment. Um, we think of clinical trials as a way to help people get the best care for their cancer because we know that standard treatments aren't enough um, and we want to help give people the very best care we can. Um, uh, in terms of benefits of clinical trials, there are many benefits. One is just advancing knowledge. Whether a particular trial would help any specific person is a little bit unknown. We hope to match the best trial to the patient so that they have the most likelihood of benefit. But like with all treatments, it's a question of trying it and seeing if it, if it helps or not. Cassandra, I know there have been so many changes recently with the COVID-19 pandemic and so much upheaval, both in society and at the hospital. Can you talk a bit about how clinical research has been affected? Yeah, so we really um, had to adapt our trials um, and how we treated patients during the time of COVID. Um, and we, we followed the FDA guidance in this. Um, and some of the things that we did to ad adapt our trials was um, to uh, set up a lot of virtual visits for our physicians to be able to see their patients um, virtually via FaceTime while the patient was still at home. And this was in attempts to keep the patients safe at home and not bring them into the hospital during the time that Boston was having such a big surge of COVID cases. We also arranged um, with uh, clinical, with sponsors that we could ship drug to patients, um, which we normally don't do. They normally have to come in and pick up their oral chemotherapies, but we were able to make those exceptions during COVID. And then some of the things that we did to change our processes during COVID, we still have in place. And those are uh, things like screening patients very carefully for any COVID symptoms. And if they have any of those symptoms, we either encourage them to stay home until they're over, or if we still need to treat them and want to treat them, we treat them in a completely separate place so that we're not exposing um, other patients to those symptoms. Um, and the other policy that we kept in place is our no visitor policy in the cancer center. And this, of course, we put into place because um, we, we know that social distancing is helping us to prevent uh, COVID from spreading. And the more people that we have in the hospital, the harder it is for us to keep social distancing. So we still have the no visitor policy in place. And this is really hard for us to keep in place because most cancer patients have a close loved one that is their primary caretaker at home. And to say to those people, we're, we're really not used to saying to those people, you cannot come to the hospital. It's challenging for patients and for their loved ones to not be able to be here with them. Um, so what we've offered instead is um, more services, ways that we can help patients come in. For example, we'll meet them at the curb and help usher them to their clinic if they have trouble walking or um, just navigating the hospital. And we also in the Tamir Center have always offered um, what we call primary nursing so that each time the patient comes to the clinic or speaks on the phone, it's the same research nurse each time, and it's the same infusion nurse. 
And together with the physicians and the rest of the team, those nurses become almost like family to the patients. And, um, and we take excellent care of them while they're here. So we're, we're hoping with that kind of support, family members will understand why they can't come to the hospital as visitors. Okay. So Becca, I think some people may have gotten the idea during COVID that we weren't running trials at all. And I, I wanted you to kind of speak to how um, we kept business going. Yeah, absolutely. It was very important to us. You know, as I alluded to before, in the cancer world, clinical trials are treatment. Um, and we think sometimes clinical trials are the best treatment for our patients, depending on the particular patient and the particular disease. Um, and so it was very important to us to keep trials going. And that meant, you know, people who are already on trials, as, as you've already described, as well as new enrollments into trials where we felt like this was the best treatment for this patient at this point in time. And so we absolutely kept those going. Of course, we followed state and hospital and FDA guidelines to make sure everyone was safe and properly socially distancing. Um, but we thought it was important to be able to enroll people into the treatment trials that we thought would really be you know, disease altering for them. Um, and so uh, it definitely is true that our clinical trial accruals went down a bit during the COVID time. And that was on purpose to allow for um, uh, for kind of all the changes that needed to happen because of COVID. But we did enroll patients, and you know, just speaking to the importance of clinic, clinical trials, I have a few patients who I enrolled into a clinical trial at the peak of COVID, um, and they were people who had a specific molecular target in their lung cancer. Um, in this particular case, they had KRAS G12C mutations. And there are drugs which are currently in clinical trials, but not commercially available that we think are very effective. Um, and the first few patients that I enrolled in those trials during the peak of COVID, probably about one and a half to two months ago, now I'm seeing them with their restaging scans and they're having responses. And so not only radiographic responses, but clinical responses where their breathing feels better, their um, they're, le they're coughing less, they're physically improved. And so I think that just speaks to the importance of being able to continue to offer trial options to our patients. And that's something I know you and your team have worked so hard to make possible. Yeah, all of us have come together. It's been a really um, rewarding time that we could keep clinical trials going during this pandemic. You know? Yeah. Cassandra, if people want to learn more about clinical trials, are there resources for them to go to? Yeah, so um, there's a website, the massgeneral.org slash cancer website. If you go there, there is a separate tab at the top called Clinical Trials and Research. And if you just click on that, you can get all the information uh, you need in order to become enrolled in a trial uh, at the Mass General Cancer Center. And I know we are all always very eager to welcome new patients in and to talk about both standard options as well as clinical trial options. So everyone should feel welcome and should also know that we're doing everything we can to keep patients safe. Absolutely. Thanks, Becca. Thanks, Cassandra.